Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. Um, that's our food. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's the opening. Hey everyone, I'm Rob Anderson. Welcome back to my channel. Today we have a very special guest. You may know him from his hit single called Single that <laughs> killed it on the that iTunes single. charts. <laughs> <laughs> and you may also know him from getting second in Smash Brothers consistently. Oh, wow. Iconic drag queen and my friend Kimchi. Hello, Kimchi here. Thank you for being here. Beautiful, soft, gay periodic table blanket. <laughs> this wasn't my idea to put this promo in here, but Kim's just a marketing mastermind. So I was like, you know what? I could help my poor friends make money. <laughs> It's true, it's true. Okay, so today, Kim, Chi, and I are gonna play Nothing of the Sort. This is how it works. We take a category, and we take one thing in that category, we talk about it, we discuss the pros, the cons, what we like, what we don't, then we put it on the sort board, and we take the next thing in that category and do the same thing. And in the very end, we have an amazing final ranking and sorting of that category. Ta-da! <laughs> Today's category is going to be Films that have won the Academy Award for Best Animated Feature. So, 20 animated films that have won the Oscar. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay. Well, we've seen all the films, by the way. The first one here is Shrek. Shrek is such like an iconic movie to me. When it first came out, I think I watched it over like 10 times. And what Shrek does successfully is there's jokes for parents watching it, and there's also jokes for kids. There's a lot of pop culture references, a lot of parodies that the kids will not notice, but all the parents will recognize. Totally. So it's truly a movie that an entire family can see together and you'll be laughing at different things. I think Shrek got away with some things then that I don't even think animated films could probably get away with. The that soundtrack way. was such a bop. Somebody was yeah. so <laughs> Probably shouldn't think it because we were copyright. You're so off key that they yeah. wouldn't even catch it. <laughs> so Shrek goes first on our scoreboard. All right. 2002, Spirited Away. Uh, Miyazaki, it's such a beautifully animated film. All of Miyazaki's like, work has you know, saved the environmental message. I feel like it's such an iconic film that I can't help but like rate it above Shrek. Yeah, I'm totally above Shrek on this one. Finding Nemo. I'm like, the voice cast is brilliant. Cancel that she had Ellen DeGeneres was brilliant, the story, you know? Yeah, it was, she was brilliant. Yeah. She was a different gal back, back then. Back then, you know, she was humble. Yeah. As much as I love Finding Nemo, I personally would rank it right under Spirited Away and on top of Shrek. Culturally, you know, like growing up in Asian, you know, like it just, the movie just like spoke to me more. And you know what, a lot of them Asian films don't actually get nominated or win for the Oscar category. So. Right, Spirited Away's first. Then Nemo. Find Nemo second. Yeah. And Nemo will be fine without <laughs> our help. <laughs> yeah, like, Nemo will do okay. I think they'll be fine. <laughs> Moving on to 2004, Disney Pixar's The Incredibles. I know you don't like superhero stuff. Right. So <laughs> I'm curious to know, like, how you feel yeah. about The Incredibles. Uh, one of Disney's most overhyped entertaining enough, but I don't think it has the heart that a lot of other Pixar films have. Well, like the whole premise and characters aren't just very relatable, you know? Like a retired superhero family. Like as a kid, I was kind of like traumatized at the end when like the villains showed like a list of all the heroes that he's killed off. And I'm like, he killed off all these people? And I say like, and that was brilliant. Yes. I'll put it at the bottom of our current list. Oh, for sure at the bottom. 2005, we had Wallace and Gromit, The Curse of the Weir Rabbit. Well, I love like the whole franchise because I grew up with it. And I've always been so fascinated by people who do claymation. Yeah. Because it's so time consuming. Yeah. I like Wallace and Gromit. Mm -hmm. And I also watched him as a kid where he goes to the moon and eats cheese and like the moon's made of cheese. Mm -hmm. It's a really cute, nostalgic thing for me too. But this actual movie was just like cute, you know? Yeah. And it was against Howl's Moving Castle. Mm -hmm. Asian hate. Also, Moving Castle is also one of the most like brilliant work on Miyazaki. Looking at these before we shot this video, mm -hmm. I was thinking that Howl's Moving Castle had won. That's how like memorable. I'm actually shocked it didn't win. Where would we put Wallace and Gromit in this list? Bottom. Moving on mm -hmm. to 2006, Happy Feet won the Oscar that year. I'll start. <laughs> <laughs> the most overrated animated Wait, movie of agreed, all time. Agreed. People love penguins, and that's the bottom of it. Happy Feet had like 
dancing numbers, right? Yeah. <laughs> it should have been a, a music video. Yeah. It really should have been 10 minutes. <laughs> yeah. It could have been like a short film that they showed before. So, <coughs> where would this one go on our sword board? I think bottom, right? Yeah, it's worse. Everything just keeps getting like pushed Yeah, to everything the keeps getting pushed to the bottom. Disney Pixar's Ratatouille. Oh, I love Ratatouille. Yeah, me too. As a fat ass, just like, you know, anything with like food speaks to me. You know, like, the message is about acceptance and love for food and family. And Beautiful animation. Mm -hmm. Really smart way of showing how food tastes with music and visuals. That was really cute. I think that that movie is as good as the first time I saw it. I agree. It's really stood up to time. Above Incredibles and below Shrek. Let me see here where we're at. Above Shrek. I also think Ratatouille had more finesse. Mm. I'll give this, I'll give you this one. Okay. You, um... See, it's all give and take here. This is yeah. like a political game, a social political <laughs> game that we're playing. <laughs> um, okay, moving on to 2008, the winner that year was Wally. -E. The first half is like pure magic. The scenery is so beautiful. But when the, um, but we just, the blob people comes on, it's like too the much. second act, it almost makes the entire movie feel like grotesque. Watch. I think Wally -E is one of my favorite characters. I love Wally. -E. They didn't need to be so heavy handed with the That's laziness true. in the spaceship. It's, if it just kept that same spirit from the first half, it would be the best. Yes, I, I agree. I would want to put it above Shrek. I feel like if the second act didn't exist, it would be much higher. Okay, fair. 2009, the winner was up. <gasps> <laughs> We love up. We love up. We love up. Like any movie that, you know, deals with old people and affection, it's bound to be a tearjerker. That first 15 minutes. Cute old people like in love, separated by death, you know? <laughs> the one thing I'll say though, is that once it got into the plot, you were reminded it was a kid's movie. Like the villain is silly and there's just, it's a silly movie. Um, but you only think that because the beginning was so strong and you didn't feel like you were watching a kid's movie, which is really something special. It says a lot about it. But I think the whole like journey and like the world that you see, that's like where like the Disney magic comes in. So I will put it underneath Spirited Away, but above Finding Nemo. Yes. Great placement. Read my mind. 2010, the winner was Toy Story 3. Toy Story 3 was really, really good. I feel like this is like where they should have ended. Toy Story 4 like really killed the franchise for me. Okay. Interesting. I'm excited to talk about this. Really? Yeah. Toy Story like just like wraps up everything on such a perfect note. I think most people would agree with you. You're not like the other girls? Uh, yeah, <laughs> I think different. I think it's really good. I love all the Toy Story movies. I think out of the four of them, it is my least favorite. And- Out of four of them? I know, I'm in the minority here, but I think that the third one didn't add new characters that I loved. Like Dolly, like the characters are, weren't memorable to me. I'm in the minority here, I, I get it. So you like that little spoon thing? And... <laughs> I, I like the other movies a little more. I mean, like one and two I completely understand, but wow. The fact that you like four <sighs> over three. Uh, I would put it above Ratatouille. Below Ratatouille. We're gonna have Toy Story 4 coming up. Push for Toy Story 4, so we'll, we'll, you'll take this one. Next up, Rango. <gasps> okay. Now Kim just watched Rango. I just watched Rango for the first time. What'd you think? Um, it's definitely not made for kids. While I was watching it, I was, I was trying to think, who would be the audience for this movie? And it would be straight guys <laughs> living like in the Midwest or something. If you have something voiced by Johnny Depp, the girls and the gays don't really want that. Want that, no. I think there's some good parts to it, but I don't think Rango is that likable. The character is like, first of all, not cute or charismatic. It's just like a random gecko. And no charisma. No charisma. Bad fashion. Where do we put? Very bottom. What is at the bottom right now? Happy feet. <laughs> Happy feet is the worst. All right, I'll give you this one. Brave. Ooh. I have hated a lot to it. Say. Yes, uh, same. None of the characters are likable. First of all, the mom is too controlling, even though she wanted what's best for her daughter. And the main character is an asshole. Like, mm -hmm. they named it Brave, which is so overt and silly. I would have been better if it was like a coming out of age story of a girl 
who like didn't want to get married, but instead like she fights for her kingdom and saves her kingdom instead. And but instead no, it was no. She didn't want to get married, so her mom turns into a bear. The way you say it makes it look sounds so stupid. <laughs> Which is what it was. I know, it really is. Okay, you you decide on this. Where do you, you wanna put it above Rango? Uh, Below Rango? At least um I can sit through the entire brain. I couldn't sit through the entire Rango. Fair. Uh, Next up is Frozen. <gasps> Let oh it go. God. Here I stand. Everyone clearly loves Frozen. It's it's the most successful Iconic. like animation of like all time. It does have its issues. So like when Anna leaves to go find Elsa, like the storyline with Hans, it's like here's my whole kingdom. You're in charge of it. All right, I'm getting in a horse to like go find my sister in the mountains by myself. Like if you're like a true like queen of like that kingdom, you like send out a search party. You wouldn't just like get on a horse and go and then leave your entire kingdom to just like random men you just met. It's horrible leadership. Things that I like about the movie, the music is obviously great. I think the story is consistently good and the characters are funny. I would even consider putting it above Spirited Away. Whoa, at the very top. Yeah. You know what? Love is an open door. It's my favorite like Disney musical number. Actually second favorite. What's your favorite? The opening song from Hercules. Yes. Come in. You're good putting it above Spirited Away. Yeah. Okay. 2014, Big Hero 6. <sighs> Big Hero 6. Oh you love? God. So, um, I first watched this movie on a plane, and um, the scene where <laughs> dies, I was like crying so hard on the plane that like flight attendants to come to me and ask if I was okay. Plane. I was just like in the airplane, like feeling all emotional, thinking about life and death and relationship. Um, that movie has a big heart. It had, does have a big heart. It, no one talks about Big Hero 6. It's true. And it's such an underrated film. And it's also beautifully shot. Yeah. Especially the scene where they're like flying over San Francisco. Like that whole scene is just beautifully animated. Yeah. I would feel good about putting it at the top spot. You know, I would too. I you mean, know? Frozen, Frozen will be fine. Gets, Frozen, Frozen gets gonna enough gonna love out of after this yeah. video. Love is an open door. <laughs> oh. 2015. Inside Out. Ooh, Inside Out was... That's another one that takes place in San Francisco. It is... my favorite. I thought it was so creative. The imaginary friend bit, mm -hmm. and I thought it was handled so well. Basically, you're getting like two stories, like in one movie. Like her normal, like everyday life, and then like inside her emotions. I'm okay putting it below Big Hero 6. I would argue to put it at least above Frozen. Okay. I, I always agree okay with that. Yeah. Okay. okay, 2016. Zootopia, I loved it. I know you have something to say, uh, a little insider knowledge about Zootopia. Did you know that um, the movie was originally made without the fox? Yeah. Who was in place of the, the fox? fox? It didn't exist, it was just a movie about just a rabbit. And then, I think it was like two or three months before release, um, the executives like decided that like the movie wasn't enough, so they had, well, had to add the fox. So they had to reanimate the whole thing with the fox added. Um, which is with like three months time and they're pulling like entire like animators pulling like all nighters every night. Wow. What a nightmare. Right? Isn't that crazy? When the bunny goes into the city for the first time and sees all the people, I'm like, oh, this is just a gay moment. Mm -hmm. It's just like the whole movie is so gay that this bunny <coughs> had it in her Yo. to do something different than what was genetically meant to happen. I just loved Zootopia. I, I think the name is unfortunate. I think that's why- I, I, I think the name is the reason why it didn't draw as many people in as it should have. I don't want to watch a movie called Zootopia. I don't want to watch Utopia anything. It's like the um, like the movie like Secret Life of Pets, you know? No interest. Yeah. Or the Bee movie. I don't want it. Name of animal and movie, not for me. Yeah. I would put it above Frozen. Coco. Ooh, Coco is good too. Like so colorful, so beautifully rendered. Family, death. Mm -hmm. I feel like I put it below Finding Nemo. Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse. Oh, I would say Spider-Man was good. I You did, probably didn't see it because you don't like superhero movies. No, that's not the case. That I did see it. You did see it. And I loved it. You did. Which says a lot about how good that movie is for someone that doesn't enjoy superhero movies. The animation style was like really unique. Um, the Spider-Man from like different verses were really cool. Was, so cool. I just think Wreck-It Ralph 2 
was so good that I can't believe it lost. A record off two is like one of my favorites. I'm disappointed that you don't think Spider Man is as good as it really I, is. I liked it. I, liked I it. thought that that would be one where you freak out. I think it came down to the subject matter. What, like, Spider Man is like, has been redone over and over and over and over again, you know? So, like, even though, you know, it was a Spider Man presented in a different way, it's still Spider Man. I mean, I still love the movie, don't get me wrong. I yeah. loved it. Um, where what would you put it? Incredibles and Wally. The middle ground would be above Shrek. To do that, I think we should meet in the middle there. Okay. <laughs> okay, let's put it there. 2019 Toy Story 4. They made an amazing character out of Bo Peep so many years after they wrapped up the story. And I don't really think of it as part of Toy Story. Mm -hmm. It's almost like it has a trilogy and then this is this extra story about Bo Peep. I, I can't believe you like the spoon. <laughs> I haven't said anything about the spoon. What was his name, Sporky? It was Sporky. Yeah. It was actually a spork and not even a spoon. <laughs> so you didn't even get his identity right. <laughs> you misutensiled Sporky. No. But I don't know. I just kind of wish like the entire movie was like never made to begin with as a fan of the Toy Story franchise. <sighs> okay. But then at the end when like, Woody goes off with Bo Peep and he separates from like the rest of his friends, he leaves all of them behind for a woman. It wasn't for a woman. These toys are born to be companions for humans. Their lives are directly related to how those humans feel about them. And it's cruel. It's a cruel existence for a toy. So if Woody wants to go off and be an independent person and not have to do what toys are meant to do. I really like that message. Though I do understand what you're saying where they wrapped up the third story so nicely, you almost wish that to that Woody wasn't in this. You wish it was like Bo Peep and some other new toys. Yes. So it would feel separate from the franchise. I, I get that. I wonder like how what they did with Puss and Boots and the Shrek movies, you know? Yeah. So, Toy Story 4, I think it's written incredible. Then let's do it. Let's put it there. We wrap this up? Yeah. 2020. The winner was Soul. I like Soul. It just uh, it came out during like a really awkward time during the pandemic. I think because um for Disney movies, whenever the main character is black, they never stay human throughout the entire movie. Right. They make them into like a character. Princess and the Frog. You know, like they're a frog for most of the movie. I actually just also don't think the movie's very good. I think it's one of their worst, and I think the concept of your soul has been so effectively portrayed in other Pixar movies that this felt like a real cop-out. It was almost like it was a draft for something like Inside Out, Coco. But better than Rango. Better than Rango. Okay. <laughs> it's better than Rango. I'm surprised by our top choice. I, yeah, actually. Coming in here, I wouldn't have thought that we would have had that both as number one. Yeah, but it did. I feel good about it. I feel like the comment section is going to be a mess. <laughs> but also, tell us how you feel about Rango. Uh, thank you so much for Kimchi for joining us. I had fun. Let me know if you want to see Kimchi again. Um, I will try to pull him from his busy schedule to come here. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much for watching. Uh, I am now posting regularly here on YouTube. Nothing of the sort is back. So remember to subscribe if you want to see more of it. Uh, and I will see you all next time. Bye.